So what are you doing to prepare for this upcoming cold spell we're getting ready to have this week? Today is uh, Monday, uh, January the 20th. And as a lot of people know, pr pretty much the whole country is going to be going through like a cold spell this week from the storm and a lot of the south and the southeast. You know, we're going to be getting a lot colder temperatures than we normally have. I think here it's supposed to get down to, I'm in southeast of North Carolina. Here it's supposed to get down to like 17 degrees and then with a wind chill, maybe like 7 degrees. You know, we're not used to anything like that so the things i've been doing you know just in case we end up getting any ice or anything like that you know if you have any kind of ice build up trees are going to start falling and knock down power lines and most people you know they're going to be on grid power of course i have uh solar power here on my building i got solar on my house and uh so i should be good to go but one thing i am doing even though i have solar is i'm making sure to get those batteries uh fully charged and then I'm pretty much just going to uh, save it. I might run like half my house on solar. And then my building here, of course, I'll still have the heat on and stuff uh, to keep everything in here like it should be with the lithium batteries. But, you know, you don't need to just be running your system like you do all the time unless you're completely off grid and you don't have a choice. If you do have grid power, like my system's all off grid, but I do have grid power so I can use that when I need it. So I just turn off part of my house and let my batteries charge up. So today it's actually sunny outside. So letting the batteries charge up, and even if it wasn't, you know, you can charge it back from a generator if completely off grid, or use your grid power and and charge your batteries back and go ahead and get ready for the potential power outages from maybe ice or snow, or whatever the case may be. And a lot of areas in the south that's just not used to that. But we'll go ahead and jump into everything else that I'm gonna be doing today, prepping for this cold weather that's coming in. You know, we've already had, you know, a lot of days this month that's been in the low 20s. But when it starts with the wind chill getting down in the single digits, you know, you could possibly have freezing pipes and stuff like that. So I'll be talking about one thing I'm going to do. My uh, water faucets outside, you know, just to make sure they're not getting frozen. So I bought some little covers to go over there. I'll go ahead and show you that now. I'll go ahead and get those covered up. So that's not going to be a problem with those getting frozen, you know, because we might have several days, you know, where we're less than a, a freezing temperatures. And that's just not normal for southeast of North Carolina. And the next thing I'm doing, actually I'm doing it right now and I've already been doing it for the last day or so is I have a lot of extra uh, power banks. So I'm getting all those charged up just in case somebody else needs to use some, you know, somebody else. If we end up having no grid power around here and, you know, friends, family, whatever, they need some power. You know, we might be able to let them borrow a gas generator or one of our little solar generators. So I got all these banks powered up. You know, I got a, like a Blue Eddy. I got Anchor. I got a All Powers. Just several Anchors. I got another Anchor over here. So, you know, if you already have one of those, make sure you go ahead and get that thing charged up. So it's going to be good to go whenever you need it. And if you don't have one of those and you're interested, of course, I will have those linked up down in the description below. And any order from Signature Solar over $500, you'll get $50 off as long as you use my, one of my links. It's a discount code through the link, and you'll automatically be entered into my drawings that I do for everybody that makes purchases from Signature Solar through my links. So if you want one of the anchors, you know, the Solixes, you know, you can go ahead and order one of those and get a discount. And all the other products, I'll just list them up from Amazon. So another thing you need to be doing is testing out your generator. So go ahead while it's a little warmer today. So right now where I'm at, it's 39 degrees right now and it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So go ahead and start your generators up while it's not completely freezing out there. Make sure everything is working. So if you do lose grid power, bam, you'll be good to go run your generator to at least be able to keep your house uh, warm or keep you some lights on or whatever the case may be. I'm not sure what kind of uh, uh, heat you have. You know, if you have gas heat and stuff like that, you'll probably be fine. You might be able to use the generator to run maybe a furnace, you know, basically the fan and keep your house warm. Or if you need to, you know, you can run some small heaters or something like that or a mini split or something with your generator. It's all just going to depend on your setup. You know, mine, what I would do is charge my batteries back you know, if I needed to, to run my house. But hopefully right now, you know, all my batteries, I think my house, my batteries for my house is fully charged. And let me see my batteries over here. Yep, they're fully charged. 99% on my batteries here in the building and my batteries on the house is 100%, you know, cause I only have it running part of the house. So I got way more solar coming in than it's using. So I don't have to worry about the batteries dying until it starts getting dark. And then that part of my house that's using the power, you know, my batteries will go down some, but if all the power goes out, I should be able to run my heat and stuff like that. 
I'll just make sure we're not running the dryer and stuff like that. Extra stuff, I just will cut it out, even though it probably would be fine. I probably have enough batteries, but just in case, you know, I don't want my family to be cold. So I, I want the heat to be able to work. And another thing you need to be doing is making sure that whatever kind of generators you have, make sure you have fuel. So go ahead, go ahead and get you some extra fuel for that. I bought a new propane 20 pound tank and, uh, went over there and got that thing filled up. So of course I have several of those. I have generators that will run off of propane and gas and natural gas if I had it, but I don't. And then also what you can do with that propane is I have some of these little uh, fuel kegs. I'm gonna go ahead and get these filled up today so I can run my little tiny heaters in the house. Like let's just say for some reason the grid power went out and I had a problem with my solar system or the batteries died. You always just need to have backups, especially when it comes to cold weather, you know, and we're just not used to it here in the South. So I want to make sure my family's not going to be cold. So of course I have several of these Mr. Buddy type heaters. I think this is a different brand here. This is a Dyna Glow right here. So I got, I got some of these and then I have several of them. That's the Ozark Trail brand from Walmart. You know, they're a little bit cheaper and I have ran all those today. They're all good to go. They're going to work. You can either hook them up, like I said, to the little one gallon of fuel tanks, or you can use basically a hose adapter and hook up a 20 pound propane tank directly to your little heater. And that's another way you, you and your family will be able to stay warm. And of course I'll leave this fuel keg a link below. You can get them right on Amazon. You can get them from Walmart, track supply, different places. And I'll leave this adapter. You know, it's got this little kit. You put these little feet on your 20 pound tank, turn it upside down, put this adapter on there and you can fill the fuel keg right from the 20 pound tank. I'll leave all this linked up down in the description below. So you might not get it in time for this storm, but maybe the next storm you'll be more prepared, you know, just getting this information. And the most important thing I think anybody could do is make sure your vehicles are filled up. I don't care if you have an electric vehicle or a gas powered vehicle or diesel, make sure the tanks are topped off. That way, if you have some kind of emergency, you know, you'll be able to run your vehicle. You can get in your vehicle to warm up if it gets really bad, you know, don't have it in your garage or anything like that. Make sure it's outside. You know, if you got the thing running or you can run it to charge your phone. So everybody has a generator that has a vehicle as long as you have fuel in it. So have fuel in it. And if you can have extra, even if you don't have a generator, you can run that thing at least to run some lights and stuff like that. And you can get in your car every once in a while to get warm if it gets bad enough. And then I also have a, a Mr. Heater blue flame heater, like your regular indoor heaters. You know, I'll go ahead and show you a picture of that now. And so what you can do is hook that up to a 20 pound tank temporarily as well, you know, and I can use that to heat up a house or I can let somebody borrow it that doesn't have solar. Cause I, I mean, I don't plan on losing power. I should be able to heat up my house, but a lot of this stuff I can let other people borrow, you know, if they don't have anything. And if it comes down to it, you know, let's just say, you know, your vehicle doesn't have any fuel, uh, you're at, out of grid power. You don't have any other way to heat anything in your house. If you have any camping gear like a tent and sleeping bags, you can set your little tent up inside your living room, get out all your, your whole family in there in a sleeping bag inside the tent, and you're gonna be a lot warmer than the rest of your house. And that body heat, you're gonna get trapped inside that tent. It's gonna be able to heat it up some, plus being in a sleeping bag. So if you have any kind of camping gear, you know, you should be able to survive. Throw some blankets in there. If you only have summer sleeping bags, Throw some blankets on top of it, gonna give, give you more insulating value, and you should be good to go for a few days. If you get a lot of ice accumulation, you get kind of trapped at your house for a day, you know, you should be good to go as long as you have some normal things around your house, you should be able to stay warm. But like I tell everybody, I always try to be as prepared as possible. You know, one is none, two is one. That's why I have solar systems. That's why I have gas generators. That's why I have propane heaters, you know, as backups. Cause you just never know what's going to happen. And Hey, I want my family to be taken care of and as warm as possible. I have a lot of kids, so, you know, they're not going to understand, Hey, having to try to stay under blankets and all this other stuff. And, uh, I don't want them being cold. So if you like these kind of tips or you have any tips that you can share with anybody else, Hey, leave it down in the comments below. I'm sure people will get on there. There's probably a lot of stuff that you guys are doing that I didn't even talk about in this video. So go ahead and think about hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button. And thanks for watching.